Well, here we are. Another week of indoor arena football is now finished. And well, things happened this week. Things happened. Things happened. Things happened. The NAL, well, another week of Antonio Brown, you know, stuff happening. It kind of overshadowed the events that happened at the BP Arena, in which Fayetteville absolutely destroyed the Albany Empire 49-27. You know, AB said he was going to play, and then there was, you know, stuff about, you know, his physical not being in on time, and then, you know, Siegfried said he could play, you know, he could override, you know, because there's no limitation on owners playing, you know. But there's also the, this thing now, now the, the Albany Twitter is publicly saying, hey, we want Cam Newt. Cam, you, are you ready to come? You ready to come to Albany? You ready? I don't know. I don't know right now. That situation, luckily, I don't have the energy to talk about it this week. So, you know, enough said about AB and the continuing dumpster fire that is the Empire, who are 1-5 in five now. Jonathan Bain, he's on Orlando now. He did not play last night because, you know, again, he got signed late in the week. But now the Preds have to get out of their own way. They're 1-4. They lost to West Texas. A lot of turnovers in that game. A lot of turnovers in the other game that happened just now, about 30 minutes ago. Jacksonville beat up on the San Antonio Gunslingers, and it's a 70-43 to score in which now you look at Castronova, you look at Jacksonville, now you look at this Sharks team with the icy whites on too. Absolutely beautiful. I mean... Are they the team to beat in the NAL? You know, there's still the Carolina Cobras there. You know, you look at that top three, San Antonio, Carolina, and Jacksonville, you look at them, and I mean, hey, this may this may be the three teams to beat. You know, and you just look like the fourth through seventh position, I mean, just a lot of muck. As... That's a good old buddy of mine would say, just a lot of muck. You know. Like Fayetteville's three and three, but I mean eh, it's eh, three and three. IFL, really uh not too much to say. Frisco's defense, they do kind of look vulnerable now. Arizona looks like they're back to being an elite team. You know. The way they beat up on Vegas and Frisco again had to survive a shootout with Nate Davis. That 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 really cannot bode well, you know. Mass beat Tulsa, you know, Duke City survived against Naz. Iowa got blown out yet again. Block kick in that game, which was absolutely hilarious. Quad City, Green Bay, another chippy game with the Green Bay Blizzard. Tucson lost to Dalton Sneed. In the Bay Area, you know, you look at the standings. Most teams have six games left. Quad City has five. And honestly, you know, really the East is really just kind of firm in its stance. You look at it and you see that really it's going to be a battle between Sioux Falls and Green Bay really for that last spot. There's no way Tulsa or Iowa. Tulsa's a scrappy team. They're a really fun team to watch. You know, nice arena. They get their fans in and everything, you know, and they just do they do the best they can, but they're still 1-8. and eight. In the West, I mean, there's really not much to say. What can you really say that hasn't already been said about the Western Conference? I mean, you got, I think that should be a 5-4 right there for Naz. I might have messed up right there. Uh, Bay Area 6-3 and three at the top of the Western Conference, looking like a really good team. Just beat the best team in the league, not even eight days ago. And, I mean, the rest of the West, it's a dogfight. It's still a dogfight in the West. Really, you got 12 teams competing for eight spots. And in the CIF, right now we have Salina beating Gillette in a crazy game. And then Sioux City got blown up by Omaha. So, therefore, that means... 
that Sioux City will be traveling to Billings on June 5th. That's right, June 5th. If you saw the community post that I made, we were wondering when would that Billings game be? And then there was an article that came out the other day um, that Stevens Itis was, you know, he was all upset because the Fargo Invaders didn't show up on May 25th for the exhibition game that they were supposed to have. He also wants to add two games back to the CIF schedule, which is a welcome addition. Please do that. That is absolutely needed in the CIF. You need those two games back. It's kind of, It's been kind of weird the past, like, two or three years seeing the CIF with only ten games. It's really been weird, you know, you guys can still start the season in February and everything, but you know, we can we can absolutely do without the um, the exhibition games. And Steven Titus is just like I- I've had enough. I don't want to do alumni games. I've had enough of this. We we got to do something to where we can get you know more games on the schedule because it kind of doesn't make sense to have six home games, you know, and one of those exhibition kind of. Treats them. It kind of. It doesn't even. It didn't even count on the fans. You know, season ticket passes. So, like, again, the point of the exhibition games. They don't serve any purpose anymore. It's 2023. Thank you, Steven Titus. You are a real one. And the CIF regular season is now over. Omaha, Salina, first round buys. Gillette will be playing Southwest Kansas on June the third. And again, Sioux City will face Billings on June the 5th due to other stuff going on at the Metro. In the other leagues and stuff like that, you have the Columbus Lions beating up on Mississippi in the AIFA. That's really the only game that happened, I believe. You know, so yeah, that's the thing that happened. Mississippi just looks sloppy. A lot of bad snaps that game. Columbus will kick off. Next week, with a Friday night game against the Capital City Cyclones, we'll see if the Capital City Cyclones show up. We'll see if they show up and are realistic, because I just I just don't see it. I, I really don't. EIF, well, it's done. The the Crystal Bowl, as they called it. Southern the Southern Steam beat the Atlanta Furies for 34-28. AWFC Idaho is three and one. Their regular season, their season is done. Their regular season is done. The Idaho Horsemen are three and one in the AWFC. Oregon zero and two, and there's still a month left in the AWFC season due to arena issues. Now, you know things can be corrected. You know, and just kind of get this over with in like maybe a couple weeks or something like that. You know, hint, hint, move some of those games around. But no, that's not the case. Instead, Oregon and Wenatchee are going to battle out twice over the course of a month, ending on July 1st instead. So we'll see what the AWC continues to do as we continue to wait and wait and wait for. Well, more. Continue to wait for more AWC action. Um, the AL2, those other Week 6 scores are there. Who cares? They haven't even updated the Week 7 scores yet. I mean, just kind of slow, slow stuff from the AL2. But yeah, that's about it. Nothing much really to say. Playoffs are coming closer. We're, he- we're in past the month of May. We're into the summer. The best time of the year. Ten weeks left. You know. Yeah, about ten, ten or so weeks left until we transition, you know, into college football and NFL and stuff like that on this channel. And I've gotta say, I'm I'm ready for this summer. It's gonna be a real good summer. I will see you all tomorrow on Memorial Day. We got a lot of cross to talk about. Take care. See you tomorrow.